So we're going to talk about, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to talk about this analogy I shared with you. Um, okay. And you, you know, the one about the refing, right? Yes. So we talked about this. And so, you know, as a superintendent, like obviously st stuff is, it's not like everything's just smooth sailing lately, right? There's gotta be some stuff that you deal with. And the analogy I shared with you is that I, I, I liken being a superintendent, actually, to be honest, you, a teacher, not yeah. just superintendents, uh, but basically anyone in education to when I used to ref basketball, especially at the high levels. And the thing that I always say is that when you ref basketball uh, or any sport, you are wrong 100% of the time to 50% of the people. It just depends on which 50%, there are, uh, whatever the day, right? And it, it feels like that all the time. And, you know, people feel that. So how, how do you, instead of like talking about like some of the things that you struggle with, how do you how do you make tough decisions when you know that you're, you're going to get pushback from s some group right away? Like, how do you, how do you actually come to the decisions that you make? Cause I think that is actually much more important than necessarily the decisions you make or the, the things that you have. Cause like people, you know, sometimes if you're just making a decision because you're scared of this group, mm -hmm. probably not going to be best for kids. Right. So like, okay. how do you, how do you make decisions when you know you're going to get pushback on stuff? That is, that's a, that's a great question. George. I actually just uh, made that question up and yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, that, was a, that was a good question. George. Yeah. I, 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 I was, I was pretty, I, I think you probably have a book somewhere. And I you're don't. Just reading off I was, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, that is a good question. <laughs> All right. Well, so I will say to you that, um, as this has been my, this has kind of been my mantra ever since I was a building administrator mm -hmm. and, and this was shortly after I became a, a, a parent. I became a dad. Um, I would always say to everyone and anyone, whenever I had the opportunity to be in front of a group that I got to talk to, especially educators or those people working with me, um, I would say I would say to them that um, making decisions, um, especially tough decisions, has to be grounded in what it is that you would want to have for your own kids. Mm -hmm. You make decisions or you have to make decisions that are based on what you think is right. What you think is going to benefit kids, the majority of kids, right. hopefully all of kids right. in the most impactful way. And you have to see it through the eyes of not just a person who's doing a job, but as a person who is invested because you have your own kids that could benefit from that. Mm -hmm. So my, I, make, I, make, I make decisions based on what it is that I want for my own kids, my own biological kids. That actually when, so for me, this is, this is as, as a parent, this is, I'm taking off my educator hat as a parent, this is my expectation. So Sean, if my kids are in your district, I would say to you, Sean, all I ask of you, never put my kid in a class that you wouldn't put your own kid. And that's that's what I, I want 100%. That's yeah. what I want 100%. Yeah. And I would say that to my staff too, all the time. Mm -hmm. If I walk into a classroom and I see something that I wouldn't want for my own kids, mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got concerns and those concerns have to be addressed. Yeah, and I, and I, I so appreciate that because I think sometimes um, we can get caught up in how some of the adults are talking, right? And it's, I, I, I always try to assume positive intent. I, I really do, right? And even, even as, a, as a principal, uh, you know, in my time, sometimes when I feel like a conversation was getting lost for me, right? Like was going in a, a negative direction. I would actually say like to uh, uh, the parent, the caregiver, hey, hey, we are here to do, what's best for your child, correct? And I would actually, I wouldn't just make it as a statement. I'd make it, I'd ask it as a question mm -hmm. because I wanted them to, uh, to agree with that statement to center them and myself. Because I think sometimes um, it would be easy for my ego to get lost in that situation where it's now like, okay, now I just, I'm just gonna like argue with this parent because like, I, I'm not liking the situation. And then you could easily lose yourself and not focus on the kid, right? Right. And so I think that was for me, like I always tell people when you're having some of those tough decisions, you have to have that kind of centering moment where people are reminded why they are there. 